Hello there and welcome to your Friday One Show live on BBC One and I Player with Roman Kemp. And Alex Jones. Now it may officially be the last Friday of summer. It's very sad. Ooh, very yeah. sad. Uh, but this lineup is certainly going to brighten up your evening. I love that they're all fanning because yeah. it's in the summer. <laughs> yes, Dame Joan Collins will be sharing her thoughts on everybody from Elizabeth Taylor to Taylor Swift. And she'll be revealing why she once turned down a date with Frank Sinatra. Can't wait. And joining her is BAFTA award winning actor Adil Akhtar. He's known for solving crimes in Form Me Once and Enola Holmes, but now he's fighting for justice in the explosive new series of Show Trial. We'll hear more about that later on. Plus, we'll be talking to the one and only. Chesney Hawks. He will be telling us about releasing his first single in over a decade and why his musical comeback was inspired by the hit film Saltburn. You're laughing why I'm dancing, but you can't not dance to that. <laughs> also, coming up, we'll be heading inside a one-of-a-kind exhibition. It's brand new, celebrating hundreds of unique hobbies which might just inspire you this weekend. Oh, look at the My Little Pony. And if you've got a question for any of tonight's guests, then do get in touch. The details are on the screen for you. Yeah, but first, we're starting tonight by delving into one of the most famous legal cases in rock and roll history, which is now taking centre stage in a new play premiering tonight. Yes, the Redlands trial gripped the nation as it took nearly down the Rolling Stones. As it took down the Rolling Stones, nearly. And one man who knows a thing or two about it is Nigel Havers. By the 1970s, the Rolling Stones were one of the biggest bands in the world. But their international success almost ended before it began. This is Chichester Crown Court, and here in 1967, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards stood trial on a drugs charge. It was a national scandal because the country's biggest rock stars were in the dock. And my father was the lawyer trying to get them off. As a teenager, I was part of the story. Now the story has been turned into a musical play with a little guidance from me. The characters include the band members, singer Marion Faithful, who was dating Mick Jagger, and a very young and dashing version of yours truly. Jasper Talbot plays Jagger, and Brennock O'Connor is Keith Richards. Had you ever heard of the Rolling Stones? No, they're a very niche <laughs> band, Nigel. The thing with the Stones music that resonates is it is a little bit of a fight against authority. The play tells the story of how Keith Richards' house, Redlands, was raided by police during a party following a tip-off. Mick was charged with possession of drugs and Keith with allowing his house to be used for smoking cannabis. My dad, Michael Havers, played by Anthony Carf, was a leading lawyer. My father said, hope to God they don't ask me to defend them. <laughs> and within an hour, the phone went and he came in and said, I shall be defending you. <laughs> <laughs> Which meant I would meet my teenage heroes. I'm played by Louis Landau, and Marion Faithful by Ema McDade. Here you are playing real people. Is that fun? Yes, I'm loving it. I've watched endless interviews of yours, and the quality you have is you're so playful. You've just got a real twinkle in the eye. I really think we need to change your vibe. Oh, yes, I agree. I loathe my vibe. Dad was very establishment and disapproved of the Rolling Stones. In the play, he's also shown disapproving of the 17-year-old me when I took up Marion's offer of a makeover. You will not wear women's lipstick to Sunday lunch. Not in my house. What's wrong with lipstick? Go to your room! Writer Charlotte Jones was drawn to the clash of cultures between the establishment and rock and roll. This is a brilliant story that has national significance, but there's also a little domestic drama in there that's going on at the same time. So I think you see that in the Stones standing up to the establishment and in your young Nigel standing up to his dad. My relationship with my dad improved once he'd met and got to know the band members. Did you notice that after the trial that there was a softening towards you? Yes, our relationship took a turn. He sort of fell in love with me and I fell in love with him. I had a proper father now. In the end, Mick was given a three-month sentence and Keith was sent down for a year. The sentencing shocked the nation and caused an outcry. Mick Jagger completely broke down and was very, very scared. It was two young men who suddenly were in the eye of a storm and the result of that was they were gonna go to jail. 
Although Marion Faithful was not herself put on trial, Charlotte was keen to expose how the case affected her. She has said very publicly that Redlands ruined her life. She was really pilloried in the press, so I think she was really, really damaged by it. She was the it girl who was photographed often but didn't like to be photographed. But she was 21. I mean, that's a baby. Following the jail sentences, my dad represented Mick and Keith at the appeal. I could tell it was a really big deal. He took my hand on the way to the court and I realised his palms were sweaty, so I thought, God, he's nervous. But Dad got them off. The original sentences were overturned, leaving the Stones free to play their music. If they had gone to prison for a long period of time, they wouldn't have been able to tour to America, no, and their trajectory might have been very different. I've had this story in my head for, ooh, 50 years, maybe more. And now Charlotte Jones has turned it into a play, and here at the Chichester Festival Theatre, they're doing a most wonderful job. And you can catch Redlands, the play, at the Chichester Festival Theatre from today until the 18th of October. No, thanks really to good. Nigel as well. We yeah, big Nigel. thanks. Uh, right, let's say hello to tonight's guests. We're joined by a 90s pop star who's back with brand new music, a BAFTA-winning actor and a Hollywood legend of stage and screen. Please welcome Chesney Hawks, a deal actor, and Dame Joan Collins! <laughs> Oh, this is a good Friday for us, isn't it? Um, but you two, Chesney and Adil, you're very excited to be next to a dynasty icon, aren't you? Oh, oh my lord. Come on. Utter honour. Of course. Speechless. You're in showbiz. Speechless. Speechless. <laughs> Joe, this is different. This is different, Dave, Joe. Honestly, um, different. we were just saying it before the cameras were on. Legend. Amazing. Absolute legend. Thank oh, you. well, fantastic. Well, well Dame Joe, it is, it's an honour to have you back once again. Yes. Uh, because the, the best thing about this is because you, you, you were here quite recently talking about One Night Only. You're, it started yes. with the book and then it went to the tour. But you're back. You need more tour dates. We've got another date to look forward to. <laughs> and Good. so many stories uh, from throughout your life that, that we have to talk about. But this date with Frank Sinatra, <laughs> right? You turning down a date with Frank Sinatra, please do tell. The date that never happened. Well, I'm doing a movie in London and I'm living at home. And my mother comes in in the morning, very excited, holding the phone. And, you know, we had on a long leash, obviously. Yeah. And she <laughs> said, Frank Sinatra's on the phone. He wants to talk to you. So I said, he said, Hi, Collins, Sinatra here. I said, oh, hello. He said, you want to have dinner? I said, oh, well, that that would be uh, yeah, very nice. He said, yeah, tomorrow? I said, well, I have an early call tomorrow. He said, well, I'll change your call, kid. <laughs> I said, oh, you can't do that. I'm a very serious actress. You can't change my call. He said, I'll send my plane. I said, your plane? Where is your plane? He said, Hamburg. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, well, I'm sorry, I can't. And he hung up. He hung up? Yeah, but I met him after that a few times. And I actually, he was in the yeah. film that I did. Yeah. He came yeah. on with Dean Martin. They did a special kind of event. It was a movie I did with Bob Hope and Bing Crosby, and um, it was a musical. Uh, quite fun. Amazing. Yeah. So, the name's just there. Yeah. Just it, 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 it yeah. is nuts. And ultimately, <laughs> you did turn down Frank Sinatra. That's yeah. brilliant. So there's brilliant stories Along about... with many other women. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> you turned um, down other women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, you tell brilliant stories about meeting the Beatles and Elvis. But more recently, you said that you really admire Taylor Swift. Well, actually, what I was asked was, in an interview, who do you think are the icons of today? And I said, well, that's very hard to think. I thought that Queen Elizabeth was an icon. And they mm. said, well, you know, the young girl. I said, well, it's obvious. It's Taylor Swift. She's a great example to young people. Mm. I like the way she dresses. I like her attitude towards life. Mm. And um, so I suppose she's an icon. But I've never seen her. Yeah. Well, oh, you must go. Yeah. He's having a great time. Where am time. I going to go? You think I'm going to go oh. to one of those arenas? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Dame, Dame Joan should do no, a special. I think she'll do a special for you. She'll fly in on her plane. Well, well, look. Yeah. Uh, talking of icons, uh, next. Uh, Friday, you've got a new BBC Two series that is looking at the life and the legacy of Elizabeth Taylor, uh, someone you knew very well. Very well, yeah. yes. I mean, what, what, what was she like? She was what I call a girl's girl mm. and a, a man's woman too, obviously. Uh, we, I said we always had a lot in common. We both liked dressing up and getting married a lot. 
<laughs> it's a joke. Yeah, of course. And um, I met her first when I first went to Hollywood, and she was married to Mike Todd. And the guy that I was dating, he knew her, and so we all went out to dinner at a restaurant called La Rue, and she was really fun and lovely and very, very easy to talk to. And then um, I did her last... I met her many mm. times, many, many times, and we went out a lot of times, but I did her last film. Um, called Diesel Broads, which, um, and um, we knew that she wasn't feeling too well because mm. she couldn't really walk and she had to have mm. a wheelchair. But the thing is, she'd just been made a dame. And uh, so when she and Elizabeth Taylor, uh, Shirley MacLaine and Debbie Reynolds and I were all being arranged in our chairs, and the assistant director said, now, Elizabeth, um, sorry, Dame uh, Taylor, uh, Miss uh, Elizabeth, uh, what, what do I call you? <laughs> and she said, Dame Elizabeth, I want everybody to call me Dame Elizabeth. And he said, do you want it on the call sheet? She said, yes. So they put it on the call sheet. They had it on the back of her director's chair. But she was great. I was mm. very upset when she died. Um, she had an amazing life. Yeah. If you want to talk about an amazing life. Mm -hmm. I mean, she did so much. First of all, I think she was a very underrated actress. She was terribly good in everything she ever did, mm -hmm. starting from when she was a little girl in those Lassie films. And then she, de uh, she won an Oscar once or twice, I think. And uh, she was very underrated. And she said that in the, the, the documentaries was on the other night about her, she said, all they ever said was that I was pretty. She said, it's only when I took my makeup off her, mm. um, when oh. I played George and Martha in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, that they realized I could act. And I think that's wow. um, things that happens to a lot of, um, of actresses. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, One gosh. Underrated. Um, well, Dame Joan, it's so brilliant to see you and so many brilliant stories. Um, Joan's one night only show is on at the Adelphi Theatre in London on the 22nd of October. Thank you so much. Yeah, so fantastic. Yes. Uh, still to come tonight, Adil tells us why studying law came in handy for his new legal drama show trial. And we take an exclusive look at Chesney's music video for his brand new single, and it's fair to say, isn't it? It leaves little to the imagination. Yep, 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 yep. We'll leave that one there for now. Uh, now, as we head into the weekend, millions of people will be setting time aside to enjoy activities they love. And for some, that might mean cooking or, if you're like me, collecting tiny ceramic ostriches. What? I've got a few. But a, <laughs> but a new <laughs> exhibition is shining a light on some surprising pastimes that deserve to be celebrated. And we went to meet the people who made it all possible. Not really ostriches. My name is Hetain Patel, I'm an artist. But in his spare time, he makes Spider-Man costumes and decided to host an exhibition in a warehouse in Croydon to celebrate the hundreds of hobbyists from all over the UK. Each one takes about four months to do, sort of just hand-painting every stitch onto the costume, and then the exhibition expanded from that. What about all the other hobbies? What would it be like to gather all of those things together that people do in their spare time and celebrate it? These incredible miniatures are the handiwork of Lee Smithson from Sheffield. This particular model's all from my mind. Basically an 80s living room, basically my childhood. I think the first tiny thing I ever made was a chair out of pencil leads, just to see if I could. I got more deeply into it when I started with my anxiety. Um, it helped with that quite a lot. It focuses your mind away from everything. I get a lot of commissions of people's businesses, football stadiums, narrowboat, fairground rides. That's been a bit of a dream of mine, really, to turn this hobby into a, a full-time job. So this is Lee's idea of heaven making this sort of thing, you know, really small and intimate, and I think it's testament to the amount of time some people put into something, where you can hold it in your hands, and yet you can feel the sort of labour of love in it. Adam Buss from Manchester has lent his collection of football shirts from around the world. I've got around about 170 in total. About 150 of those are now with the exhibitions team. First shirt I bought was when I was about 14, and it was an Atalanta shirt. Italian team based in Bergamo in northern Italy. I was walking down the road, and a guy ran out of a restaurant, and he was like, Atalanta, Atalanta, and he was from Bergamo. It made me realise how powerful the kind of symbols and the colours and the designs can be for connecting people. 
we've got his collection that are going to kind of uh, waterfall down from this upper floor and down and kind of almost fly through the air on, on the lower floor. Football teams started to realise their place in the communities that they were in. So you started to see more and more shirts that were representing diverse communities, that were representing key issues in society or celebrating a piece of heritage from that place. I'm just really excited to see how diverse the range of hobbies that are being shown are. Lots of people might be interested. All the other hobbies that are going to be there, I'm really interested in seeing those. Typically, hobbyists are very modest. They'll say it's a bit silly. It's something that is important to them, that they care about. The exhibition is going to have a record-breaking sea of pom-poms from Jane Fair and her fellow crafters who meet at their local pub once a week. We're making pom-poms. There's so many different crafts that we do, mainly around uh, recycling, repurposing, reusing. We started making the pom-poms because we wanted a way of getting people joining together, being part of something bigger than themselves. We wanted to set a record. We've had so many different groups, individuals involved in it. Jane and her crew smashed the old record by nearly 10 pounds. The youngest person that we know has made one was five, and the oldest person was 93. Pom-poms make people smile, little bits of woolly joy. We just want to celebrate any amount of time that you choose to do something where you make the rules. I like the idea that someone might come here with ideas of what they're into, but then they go, oh, look at this, what is this? This is, I'm not sure what it is, but I want to know more. Doesn't that look brilliant? It is so good. Wouldn't you like to do like a pom-pom angel in yeah. the middle of all those pom-poms? Oh, great. The exhibition, which is called Kamaziwa, uh, really are, is open until the 20th of October. Um, now, Joan, you posted a picture on your social media of a hobby you used to have as a little girl. Um, these are some of your drawings, aren't they? Yes, I did. I did tons and tons of those because I didn't know whether I wanted to be an actress or a dress designer. Mm -hmm. And I used to design for my mother and for my aunties. And um, also I did design little drawings for my sister's books, Jackie Collins, yeah. which, by the way, two days ago, was her, the ninth anniversary Aww. of her death. Oh. And we all raised a glass to her. It was very tragic. 100%. I, I'm yeah. sure everyone will be thinking But I love drawing, and I design a lot of my own clothes because yeah. I can't find anything that I really like. Well, yeah, well, look, well, well that, that is a perfect hobby to have. And, yes. and speaking of, of hobbies, Adil, we've got to come to you because I always think that, you know, if someone gets into acting, they're, they're, it must be a hobby that they've had for such a long time. But for yeah. you, it was a different story. You kind of fell into acting in a, in a strange way. Yeah, well, I was studying law at the time and I was going to do this thing called an LPC, which is a legal practice certificate, which qualifies your law degree. And my girlfriend at the time was auditioning for drama school and I was a scene study partner, mm. which basically means that um, she's facing the audience and I'm just feeding her the lines. Mm. And by the time I got back to university, um, they offered me a place at this drama school. Wow. And, they, and she got in as well. But they oh, offered you, you as well. Got you both, in. both got in. Wow! Oh, so they were just. Who was the fella that you auditioned with? Gave me a phone call. You know, just like, does he want to take the place of this? Story. Thing? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, since then you've gone on to star in some brilliant dramas. We loved Fool Me Once. We've oh. got a picture of you here. Oh, yeah. And then you won the BAFTA for Sherwood, which is Did? again an incredible drama series. Oh, yeah. But it wasn't all smooth sailing, was it, from the mm. beginning when you decided you did want to be an actor? Not all smooth sailing. I know. We could, I suppose every actor's got stories about being out of work and mm. uh -huh. so, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, struggling and doing those odd jobs. So there was a bit of that. And I suppose there was a time where I was sort of in between jobs and I had a bit of money saved. And I thought, well, how can I make that money that I've saved last longer? And um, lots of my friends were sort of thinking about moving into like barges, moving out of London. Yeah. And I couldn't afford a barge, so I, I moved into my camper van for a little while. Yeah. And so I was in between jobs, did that, and it was good fun while it lasted, then it stopped being fun. And then the job started coming in and I yeah. earned a bit of money. And, but yeah. it's the beginning of the journey. Yeah. And, and, and beginning the of the out. journey, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. And you didn't give up. No. And we are thankful for that oh, because yeah. you've That's now great. got a brilliant new drama on BBC One. It's called Show Trial. What can you tell us about this one? 
Show Trial is a standalone series, so you don't need to see the first one, see the second mm -hmm. one. And I'm playing a lawyer in it who's defending a policeman who's been accused of malpractice, and he comes up against some uh, climate activists. Mm. And uh, you're going to... Is there a clip now? Yeah, we are oh, going to so, show a clip now, yes. I just yes. saw my face. I was like, you I, can don't, see it, yeah. I don't want to do your job. No, no, no. Didn't... There is actually one clip we want yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, as you said, you played defence lawyer Sam. Uh, the clip we've actually got is the moment oh. he's arguing uh, with his son as to whether or not to take yes. on the case. Let's take yes. a look. I don't think you'd be able to cope, Dad. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? I won't be able to cope. You'll go online, you'll oh. get enraged, and fair play to you. You don't even have a proper side of the culture war because you look down no, 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 on look, everything. I've got a side, right? Shall I tell you my side? Don't embarrass Reason, yourself. Reason, logic, and basic morality. I warned you, you sound stupid. Oh, so it's a morality stupid now, is it? Once you succeeded in winding yourself up, you'll sit there arguing with imaginary adversaries and pickling your own cortisol. And you know you're bound to lose. Hi, <laughs> very, 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 very good. And, of course, the brilliant thing is that the audience who are watching, in a sense, become the jury, don't they? Because they do. you never know whether the verdict's going to be guilty or not guilty. Sure. And in these high-profile cases, it is quite nuanced, because we're sort of not really sure how much our sort of bias comes into play, mm. you know? And it's... Um, Ben's writing's amazing. He's really teased that out, and I think mm. he's done a really good job with the writing. And, you know, you told us that you studied law. Do you think... It made you appreciate what people who actually do the job do, you know, because you chose, obviously, a different path. Yeah, it's hard work doing a law degree. And I came out the other side with not a very good one. <clears throat> and I worked really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I know... I, it's, and in these high-profile cases, it's so much work, like, building a case. And so I have a lot of respect for lawyers and I mean, barristers. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we see it, we see it as well in the, in the show. He, he struggles a lot with sleep and anxiety. I mean, what type of impact does that have on him? Yeah, I mean, I suppose it's sort of exploring the idea of the things that make us a little bit imperfect and not... Um, yeah, a little bit imperfect. Do they sort of feed into you know, the certain vocations that we have and make us good mm. in those vocations, you know, like, he struggles with sleep, but does that make him... And he has sort of some mental health issues as well in the, in the series, and does that make him more of an empath when it comes to, like, dealing with his clients? It's, mm. a, it's a question yeah. that's raised in the series. Well, totally, and, and he's got quite a tense relationship with the police officer, Justin, yeah. who is played uh, by Michael Soccer, oh, right, who people no, will no. know. Yeah, no, no he deserves the clapping his own, yeah. right, of course. Uh, but, I mean, how was your relationship with Michael? Did you oh, enjoy working together? I loved it. It was so brilliant. Yeah, well, you start off a job and you're just sort of passing the sort of acting ball across, you know, the, the table tennis analogy where you just like... And, and, he, and he passed it back every time. We had such fun. And he's just a great guy. Love oh, him. Brilliant. Well, look, you can watch the new series of Show Trial from the 6th of October at 9 o'clock on BBC One and iPlayer. Now, if you've been listening to Radio 2 this week, chances are you've already heard Chesney's brand new single. Yeah, now before we talk all about it, let's remind ourselves of that song that secured his place in pop history. Everybody here in the studio over there, you yeah. can't see them, but it's of like all ages, here. singing along. <laughs> and Adil, when, when you were told that you were yeah. on the same show yeah. as Chesney, didn't you sing the whole thing down the phone to yes, the researcher? Yes, I am one and only, and the dum the dums in yeah. between. I am yeah. one and only, can I take that da, 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 away from me? Da, yeah, da, da, you've got to do the whole, thing. It, the yeah, whole thing. Your commitment was so good that our researchers told us that you went past the chorus, just straight into the verse as well. Straight into the yeah, verse. I love it. <laughs> I love it. You've got oh, a rendition. I, I was surprised. It. I mean, it was really lodged in there. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. of course. It was an anthem. Can you imagine how I feel. You've hardly yeah. changed, <laughs> yeah. I have to say. Oh, bless you, Joan. You look almost the same, doesn't he? That was 33 years ago. Yeah, well. Well, we're, we're about to see a lot yeah. more of Chesney. Um, yes, uh, we'll see really? that in a second. Um, <laughs> your first single, I mean, look, congratulations, mate. First single in over a decade. And, yeah. and there was a really uh, special video that, that we saw, which is you hearing it for the first time on Radio 2. I mean, what was this moment like? That moment was just so emotional for me. 
um, because this has been a long time coming, I have to say. And like, it reminded me of that first time I heard um, that song, the one and only, on, on the radio all those years ago. Yeah. And this, I think any artist will say the same thing. Like when you hear something you've created being played out, especially on like Radio 2, something on the biggest radio sh station yeah. in the country, you know, I, I actually shed a little tear. I yeah, did. It's, I bet. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you've made us wait a while, but it is, it is a goodie, yeah. the new one, if you have not heard it. Now, people haven't seen the music video, though. No, it right? is. So let's have an exclusive look at Chesney like you have never, ever seen him before. That was the highly edited oh. television edited version. Within an inch of its life. I didn't know that it would be possible to be shown on, on BBC One. Well, well, well it wasn't without the edit. edit. <laughs> your editors, yeah. I, I'll give credit to your editors, that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Well, look, you're wearing trousers now, it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, the salt burn was the inspiration for that, yeah, right, that the movie? The, that and some others. Um, the iconic, iconic uh, scene at the end of Salt Burn, obviously, where he, he's, like, prancing around naked around a, a, a mansion, that's basically where it came from. But there's a bit of a nod to Risky Business, a bit of a nod to Full Monty. Yeah. Even The Simpsons get a little nod. Oh, lovely. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's definitely a nod to the full Monty, right? Yeah, well, no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've got three children, albeit they're a bit older now. What did they make of the video? They were laughing. They think it's funny. They're, all, as you say, are old, like 23, 21, yeah. 18, you know. I don't think I would have done this, like, 10 years ago, just for the, the, the school playground uh, stuff that they would yes. have had, you know what I mean? Yeah. But now they're like, oh, it's just Dad doing his thing. He's, like, yeah. he's having a midlife crisis, you know. <laughs> yeah. And your son, of course, plays along with you on stage. It he must does. be lovely, though, having him with you when it you're performing. It is one of my favourite things in life, uh, to have my boy on stage with me. There he is oh, there. special. Like, oh. Yeah, just, you know, just... To looking over at him with his foot on the monitor and throwing guitar Aww. shapes and doing his thing. It's, it truly is, uh, you know, he's, he's welcome on my stage whenever he wants, yeah. you know, when he that, redeems me worthy. That is so lovely, mate. <laughs> well, you know, it's like working with your dad. Yeah, I know, but it's not as fun. Um, <laughs> Chesney, question for you. Yeah. Sarah Jane has asked, uh, will we see more of the Hawks family on stage? Oh yeah, I, I, absolutely. I mean, I'm always on, on the road. I never, I never stop playing live. And you know, as this project carries on, I've got other records, other singles, and, and an album like, coming later in the year. So obviously, there will be a tour attached to this. And if Indy wants to join me, then he's welcome. So you will see a lot more Hawks on stage. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you, yes. if you want to see any more, more of that video, you can. I'm dropping, dropping it on YouTube just, just after the show. So okay. <laughs> the right. full explicit <laughs> version. Wow. Wow. Um, look, speaking of, of working with family, Joan, you, you mentioned yeah. her earlier on, working with, with your wonderful uh, sister, Jackie. Uh, I mean, how special was it to have those moments? Well, I read the book that she'd written called The Stud, and I said, this would make the most fabulous film. And she said, yes, and I, want, I thought about you to play the part of Fontaine. Mm. And she said, I will write the script for you. And so she did. But it then took me two years to get it made. I went schlepping around America and England with the script. Would you like to make a movie? It's very much like Saturday Night Fever, you know, disco and nymphomaniacal women. No, no, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she was one of the producers, and we got along really well. I miss her so much. Aww, She's been on the yes. show many times. Yeah. Lovely, yes. lovely woman. Yeah. Um, well, Chesney's new single called Get a Hold of Yourself is out now, and his album will be out next year. Yeah. Um, we just have one comment for you, Dame Joan. Um, Ken says, you are looking nothing less than fabulous, oh, as always. Huh? Love it. <laughs> uh, that is all we've got time for tonight. Thank you so much to our lovely guests. We'll be back next week when we'll be joined by so many guests, including Kylie Minogue, Jane McDonald, Vinnie Jones and David Mitchell. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs>